This is Michael Woodward, and this is Season 2, Episode 51 of the Jumble Think Podcast. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast, a podcast focused on telling the stories of dreamers, makers, innovators, and influencers. Along the way, we'll give you tips and ideas of how you can chase your own big ideas and dreams and change the world around you. Our guest on today's episode is Leon Logothetis. More about Leon in a moment. This Monday, we're doing something cool with the podcast. We're doing a two-episode Monday, where in the morning, we release one episode, and in the afternoon, we release a second. In the morning... We're releasing an episode with Chad Fry. He is doing something really cool in the city of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, with helping people make their ideas become a reality. In the afternoon, we're releasing a second episode with Jarl Johansson. It's going to be a lot of fun, so make sure to check out both episodes this Monday. Now let's jump into today's episode. Hey there, welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast. My name is Michael Woodward. I am your host. We have an incredible guest today. Before we dive into today's episode, I want to encourage you, wherever you like to listen to podcasts, head on over there right now, search for the Jumble Think Podcast, and click the subscribe button. Two of the most popular places to subscribe to podcasts are Apple Podcasts, iTunes, and Spotify. We've made it easy for you to subscribe on both of those platforms All you have to do is go to jumblethink.com slash iTunes or jumblethink.com slash Spotify, and those links will take you right to that app where you can click the subscribe button. So today's guest is Leon Logothetis. He is a super cool guy. I have actually been a big fan of his stuff since I found his show, The Kindness Diaries, earlier this year on Netflix. Season one is out right now. You can find the links in the Jumble Think episode notes for today's episode. And I love what he stands for. He is on a journey of discovery to find how kindness operates in this world and to also give back to those people making a difference. Leon's just a really cool guy, and I had so much fun interviewing him. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. So let's learn a little bit more about today's guest, Leon Logothetis. My guest today is Leon Logothetis. He is uh, an author, a TV host, a world traveler, speaker. He is a really, really great guy and a uh, big fan of his show, The Kindness Diaries. Leon, thanks so much for being on the podcast. Thank you very much for having me. Now, you are doing so much, but how would you define yourself and what you do? <laughs> that, is, that is a great question, actually. And for many years, I had no idea. I was like, what am I doing? Who am I? Um, I guess the straight-laced way is I'm a TV host, author, um, motivational speaker, but the Leon way is I'm just going out and and living and trying my best to fulfill my dreams whilst helping others do the same, I hope. (laughs) I love that because we're all about dreamers, and you have been on this incredible journey, but I want to back up. Uh, because you started uh, your career in the world of uh, investment banking, uh, or a stockbroker, uh, I guess is the better way to say it. Yeah, I was a broker in London. So how, you know, you're on this journey. How did you know things aren't quite right? I need to reassess what I'm doing and make a change. Well, uh, I think one word that would answer that succinctly is pain. Okay. I was in a lot of emotional pain. Yeah. On the outside, I had everything. Um, but on the inside, I, I, I really felt very broken. Mm. Uh, and I kept on going to this job and, 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 you know, following what I like to say is someone else's dream. Okay. Uh, living someone else's life. And finally, the pain just got too much for me. Um, and I stumbled across the movie The Motorcycle Diaries. Yeah. Which is a romanticized version of Che Guevara traveling around South America relying on kindness. Right. Something about that movie that really, it was the tipping point, let's say. Wow. That's crazy. Now, if we back up, you know, for most people who are very giving, who who are just 
uh, you know, trying to find other people to help and be on that journey, which is what the Kindness Diaries is about, that's something that's part of them from a very young age for most people. For you, this whole journey of, of chasing dreams, finding the life that brings you fulfillment, when did that really start for you? I think it started after I watched that movie. Okay. Um, o- o- although it, it, it had been kind of, you know, part of who I was for many years, but I didn't have the courage to face it. I didn't have the courage to actually put myself in those types of situations. Um, and it was the movie that kind of nudged me towards going out into the world and doing my best to live as openly as, and as freely as I could. Uh, so actually, it had been inside me for many, many years, but it hadn't really come out until that movie. From what you're saying, it sounds like you were struggling with this place of really finding significance and purpose. You've made this shift, and now you're uh, really chasing that dream. For you, and what you're doing today, how are you finding that significance and purpose? Well, I mean, the way I find significance and purpose, purpose I find by going out into the world and doing my best to meet the world and, and let the world see me as I see the world too. Like, you know, by going out into into meeting people and touching their lives, hopefully in a positive way, I get my life touched in a positive way as well. I always tell people that kindness is a win-win. Wow. Yeah, when you go out and you're kind to someone, whether it's on a big journey or in the, going to Starbucks, mm. you win because you feel better and the other person wins too. So it's a, it's a win-win. That's so, so cool. You run your own businesses, you're creating content. All of us who are entrepreneurial that are creating our own path, that are chasing dreams, we struggle with uh, obstacles. What's one obstacle you're currently working to overcome? (laughs) That's a good question. So you may not think that I would answer it this way because my show, I, I kind of do come across as, well, I would hope I do, as opening myself up and being a little bit vulnerable. But I would say being vulnerable. You know? wow. Many of us aren't vulnerable. We, we choose not to, uh, not to open up our hearts, not to share our inner worlds because we have a fear of being, of being you know, maybe crushed. Yeah. Um, so I would say that would be something that I'm working on, to become a little bit more open a little bit more vulnerable to share my truth, things like that. That's very, very cool. And in this new season, you, you've launched Kindness Diaries. You, you're still traveling quite a bit. You're speaking a lot. Uh, what's the next big goal you have for the next season of life? The next season of life? I, I, you, you, I think you're in my head. I think <laughs> you've been, uh, you have some psychic powers. I, look, I, I would say that, yes, I've traveled. Yes, I've, I've seen the world, and hopefully I've, I've, I've experienced the love, I've shared the love. But I, th- I would say that the next thing is really to kind of find someone to share it with. Oh, okay. Because, you know, it's, it's a challenge to keep on traveling and traveling alone and coming back and not really having like a family per se. Um, so I, t- I would say on a personal note, that would be something that I would, I would want to do. And, and it's interesting because many people – do it the other way round, in that they get married, they have a family, and then you know they realize when their kids grow up that they want to go out and travel and see the world. Right. I've kind of done it the other way, <laughs> where I've gone out and seen the world, and maybe now is the time to kind of settle, not settle down, because I'll never live a, a, you know, a normal life, whatever you want to, however you want to determine what normal means. But I would like to, to you know, to, to have a family. Yeah, find that adventurer to live life with. Exactly. So good. We'll be right back with Leon and our second part of our interview today. I hope you're enjoying today's episode with Leon. We have a lot more coming up in the next few moments. I want to encourage you, if you're new to the Jumble Think podcast or you've been listening to it for a while. You may look at our episode list with over 150 episodes. You may be wondering, what episode should I listen to next? Well, if you like our interview with Leon, here are a few recommendations. In season two, episode 48, our guest was Phil Rosenthal. He's the creator of Somebody Feed Phil, 
which is now on Netflix season two. And you've also seen his work as the creator of Everybody Loves Raymond. In season two, episode 45, our friend Eric Reed was on the podcast. He's a musician, well-known in jazz circles, and it's a lot of fun. We talk about family. We talk about faith. We talk about jazz and the business of music. Super, super fun episode. In season two, episode 25, our guest was Walter O'Brien. He is the inspiration for the hit TV show on CBS called Scorpion. We talk about technology, innovation, and how his life inspired a TV show. Another guest that you might really enjoy is Bill Shaft. He is season one, episode 25. Bill, for several years, was one of the writers on Late Night with David Letterman. He's worked with President Obama and countless other celebrities and comedians. Super fun episode, and you learn a lot of the -the behind-the-scenes stories of late night television. If you're enjoying today's episode, I hope you check out one of these other episodes or one of the other 150 guests that we've had on the podcast. It means the world to us that you would tune in, and I hope that you keep on listening to both past episodes and some incredible guests we have lined up for you in the future. Now let's dive into segment two with our guest, Leon Logothesis. We are back with Leon, and uh, Leon, you've got a lot of cool content. You've got The Kindness Diaries. You've got your – you have a couple books, actually. You have some great resources about Leon's Foolproof Adventure Guide and The Ultimate Daycation. How can people connect and find what you're creating, what you're doing, and and really connect with uh, this content? Well, the best way really is just to Google uh, either the Kindness Diaries or my name, and sometimes my name is difficult. So it's best to just Google the Kindness Diaries, and everything else will will come up. And uh, you can find my site, which is leonlogothetis.com, stuff like that. That's very cool. Let's dive into the Kindness Diaries. It is, uh, what is it, 13 parts to it uh, on Netflix? Yeah, it's 13 episodes. That's season one. And season two is coming in uh, uh, early next year. Oh, cool. We're going to travel from Alaska to Argentina wow. in a 50-year-old car. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's really cool. That's exciting. Let's talk about season one and then talk about where you're going and what happens in season two a little bit more. Uh, you started in L.A. and you went across the world um, and back to L.A. Through all of the United States, you went over to... Uh, Europe and through Asia and uh, had a lot of cool stops along the way. Uh, let's see, Nebraska, Pittsburgh, New York, Italy, uh, Sarajevo, Montenegro, Kosovo, Greece, Turkey, the Taj Mahal in India, uh, Calcutta, Thailand, Cambodia, Vancouver, and then back to LA. It's, it's a cool journey, but it's not just a travel show. You are literally surviving from place to place on the kindness of others. Tell us a little bit about that journey. Yeah, so basically I purchased a vintage uh, yellow motorbike with a sidecar. Okay. I called him Kindness One, sort of like Air Force One, but a little bit yellower. And I circumnavigated the world. I started in L.A., ended up in L.A. I had no money, no food, no gas, no place to stay, and basically relied entirely on kindness. Um, but with a bit of a twist. And the twist was that unsuspecting Good Samaritans received a life-changing gift. That's so, so cool. And uh, I think of uh, watching that show with my wife. We were sitting there. uh, That was our evening show for a a week or two and loved watching it. Uh, One story that stood out to me was in Pittsburgh and this gentleman you meet. Share a little bit about how often the people who have least give the most. Yeah, so the story you're talking about is Tony. Yeah. Um, I would go up to people in the street and ask them if I could stay with them. Um, and most of them would say no, which is, of course, understandable. Uh, and I went up to, to Tony. I asked him the same question. Can I stay in your house tonight? And he looked at me and he goes, look, I'm really sorry, but I'm homeless. So, you know, I felt a little bit of shame because I had just asked a homeless man to stay in his house. Wow. Um, but he then turns around as I'm about to walk off, and he says, well, you know what? If you want, you can stay with me tonight. I will feed you. I will protect you. I will give you some clothes. And there was something really quite profound about that. He, um, and I ended up staying with him. He ended up feeding me. He ended up giving me some food. He ended up uh, 
giving me some clothes. Um, and it was just a beautiful, beautiful thing. And he, he, he taught me two really powerful things. He taught me, one, that true wealth is not in our wallets, it's in our hearts. Wow. He taught me, two, uh, that if Tony can be kind, then why can't I? I have no excuse. Um, and we have no excuses. And the third thing that I did for him, which, which was really a beautiful thing for me and for him, was I put him up in an apartment and sent him back to school. And people, and he always says to me, people always say, oh, Leon, you changed his life. And I'm like, well, you know what? No, he changed my life wow. by opening his heart in such a beautiful way. Wow, that's incredible. And you are on really a journey of faith uh, because often – um, we survive on what we know or the job we have or uh, whatever that is in our life. We try to live in the place of the known, but you were living in a place of the unknown, stepping out into faith and really letting faith open the doors of possibility. That had to be filled with a lot of fear in moments of like, you know, rejection when you walk up to a person or uh, where are you going to spend the night? And sometimes you can't find someone to help you uh, or is willing to help you. So how did you face that fear or the obstacles of daily life without knowing something and relying on a faith? That's a brilliant question. And um, I think I put myself in a situation where I had no choice but to rely on faith. Mm. Because, you know, I brought along a film crew. I, I had a, a mission to, to execute. And uh, the only way that I would successfully manage it is to believe. Um, and uh, by putting myself in a, in a box, let's say, and, and, and getting rid of all the exits, the exits, I had no choice but to rely on faith. I had no choice but to rely on love. I had no choice but to rely on kindness. I had no choice. Wow. Um, and that was a, uh, a little thing that I did. I'm not sure if I did it consciously, but as I look back on it, it helped a tremendous amount to, to have no choice. That was it. Wow. In that journey, uh, you broke each episode into a topic. And I love that. Uh, the gift of love, the gift of security, inspiration, transformation, abundance, service, the gift of tomorrow, education, joy, protection, sight, loyalty, gratitude, each of those lessons, I'm assuming that they're titled for lessons that you took away from that, that time or people along the way. Uh, maybe it, it wasn't that, but what was the greatest lesson that you learned on your journey? The greatest lesson I learned was that we are all the same. Okay. Uh, we live in this world where we are told that we are different. We are told that others, there are others. We build walls. We get angry. Um, and we are told things that are just not true. And when I traveled the world, I experienced the sameness. I experienced that even if uh, someone looks different, at base, they are the same. They just mm -hmm. want to be heard. They just want to be seen. They just want to be loved. They just want to, to live. And I was staying in the slums of India, and I saw this. Uh, I woke up in the morning, and I saw this woman kissing her two daughters goodbye, and they were they were evidently off school. And in that moment, I realized that her love is the same as the, the lady in Beverly Hills and her love for her kids or the lady in Iran and her love for her kids. We are the same. So, uh, you know, that brings up a really important topic. And in our culture, in our time in history, we seem to be facing more and more division us against them, us against the world, us against whatever it is. I mean, we see it in politics, we see it in uh, nationalism between countries. How can we start really facing this challenge of, of division and really saying, you know, this isn't the reality. You know, you talk about us being the same. How do we start living that way and stop perpetuating this lie that divides us? Turn off the news. Okay. Travel, meet people. Get out of your comfort zone. Go and go and have a connection with someone who doesn't look like you. Because when you do, you realize that why are you angry? Wow. Like, like you know, I'm not saying that anger isn't part of human the way a human being works, because it is. And sometimes anger is justified. I'm just saying that uh, if we just fail to see, if we dehumanize people, then it's easy to to, to dismiss them. Wow. They are no different to you, and they are no different to I. They may have a different religion. They may have less money. They may have more money, but they are the same. 
on uh, the episodes, I'm sure there's a lot of stories that weren't told. Can you tell us maybe one of the stories that didn't get covered in the the kindness diaries that maybe you wish would have been a part of the uh, documentary, that story? I would say in season one, the main story that didn't get shared was my personal struggle. Wow. Yes, you see the struggles of my, of, of um, you know, trying to get from A to B and people saying no and rejections, but the deep personal issues of, 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 of rejection, failure, of wanting to give up, and, and it's kind of skimmed a little bit, but that's one of the things that I think I, I regret not putting in. And in season two, it will be in there a little bit more. And, you know, there are uh, tons of moments throughout that are just incredible. I think of the, uh, I think it was Scottish man uh, who uh, his son was getting married. It was just a brilliant and lovely story of, of so much sacrifice and seeing how you were able to give back to him. For you on the journey, there must have been a lot of highs and lows. What was your highest moment where you were just like, wow. This is incredible. So one of the highest moments, I mean, there were so many high moments, but one of the highest moments, uh, I was on a ship crossing the Atlantic. Yeah, yeah. I have been on a ship for 10 days. And uh, I don't know if you've ever been on a ship for 10 days, but no, it's, it's so monotonous. Like, <laughs> you, you, you start feeling like you're in a different world. Wow. I saw land for the first time. And I was, when I, when I, when I went through the Straits of Gibraltar, and... I just was, I couldn't control myself. It was, I was so happy. It's so, it's little things like that, little moments where you become so grateful and you take it back into your everyday life. And if you're sitting in a line in Starbucks and you're frustrated, you're like, you know what? Don't be frustrated. You spent 10 days on the ocean. You know, you can spend five minutes in a line. Yeah. So little things like that were really quite beautiful. And what was the moment that you were probably, uh, push to the edge the furthest, maybe fear of uh, on safety or, or the unknown. What was the moment where you just felt like it pushed you to the furthest of your, your comfortable, uh, comfortable space? I would say that my, my bike, and, and again, this isn't in the show because we couldn't film it because you can't film in border crossings unless you want to go to jail. Um, so my, my bike was impounded by the Vietnamese. Wow. Uh, and so, yeah, 70 miles away from getting on a ship to go to, to Canada. And it's in the book, but it's not in the, it's not in the ship. It's not in the show. Uh, and they refused to give me the bike. And I was like, you know, the show isn't L.A. to Vietnam. <laughs> the show is L.A. to L.A. Right. And I thought that was it. It was over. Um, so moments like that, you know, moments where you're pushed really. And we ended up getting the bike out. So it all worked out. But there were moments like that where you, you, you do, I just wanted to give up, but at the same time, I wasn't going to give up. Wow. Incredible. How did you prepare for this? How did you kind of choose? Cause you're dealing with a lot of unknowns. Uh, so, but you still have to prepare the trip, the, the, the crossings across the Atlantic, the crossing across the Pacific. How did you prepare for this? So there's two ways. First of all, uh, there's the logistical side of things, and certain things have to be organized. Right. You, know, you can't just show up at a port and say to the port authorities, can I get on the ship for free? They'd be like, what are you talking about? Right. No, you can't. So these were things I had to, I had to deal with beforehand. Um, and then on a personal level, I would say that I've traveled a lot, so I know what, what it takes to do these journeys. And it's about getting yourself in an emotional and psychological space to be prepared for whatever comes your way. Um, so there's those two things. You, there's the emotional preparation, and then there's the logistical preparation, which takes time and, and, and you know isn't isn't an easy process. Although with the logistics, uh, most of it's random, but there are certain things. You know, you have to get visas, so you have to know when you're going to be in a certain place. You have to, if you're going on a ship, you have to know what ship you're going to use, and you have to reach out to them, let them help you and stuff like that. So there was a lot of logistics that did have to get worked out. Um, but it, you still had a sense of dependency on others, the kindness of strangers, but you also seemed to find freedom as you went along the trip, maybe personally or psychological or emotionally. Uh, is that a fair assessment? And if, if it is, uh, what was, what about the trip was most freeing? 
I think the truth that was most freeing was getting out of the matrix. And what okay. do I mean by the matrix? I mean, let's say society and, and you, know, you know, the internet, the news, um, how you're supposed to be, how you're not, not supposed to be. And going out into the world and just bypassing all that and connecting with humanity. So that was the most beautiful and profound part of the whole journey. And it's always a challenge to come back to, uh, to that because you've lived this way for months on end. And then you come back and you have things you need to do and, and, and the news is, is, is on. And, and, and you kind of get back into what society wants you to get back into, which is sometimes challenging. You have a season two coming out, which is super exciting. You talked about that uh, this time it's a vehicle, a uh, car instead of a motorcycle. You start, uh, did you say Alaska to Argentina? Is that right? Yes, yes it's, a, it's another Netflix show, and it's uh, Alaska to Argentina, yeah. Cool. So what should we expect from season two? <laughs> <laughs> Much of the same. Okay. Um, kindness two, and she's called Kindness two, uh, breaks down like Kindness one, although less she breaks down less, but still, <laughs> there are problems. Yeah. Um, and uh, really just connecting with the world again. You know, it's about going out into the world and, and meeting people and, and hopefully sharing some in inspiring stories. I share a little bit more about my own life um, in season two. Uh, yeah, so those are the, the, the things. You know, a lot of, lot of adventures, a lot of humor, a lot of fun, a lot of, lot of, lot, lot of things. That's very cool. You seem to be an adventurer. Um, and through the, the shows, the book, uh, everything else that you've been doing, you really challenge other people to live their dream, to chase their dreams, to find their adventure. Uh, I think yeah, I remember seeing on your website a, a quote, and it basically summed down to any dream is possible. So as a person that's gone through this journey, is going through this journey, for those who are dreamers, those who have ideas, things that they want to do, what are some steps that they could take on that journey to making those dreams a reality? Follow your heart. Okay. Never give up. Don't let anyone else throw, throw negativity on, on what you want to do. And if they do, find someone who you can share your dream with who will listen mm. and who will inspire you. That's very cool. What other exciting things uh, do you have going on? You've got the new um, season two coming out, but you are doing all these side projects, and so much of it is giving back. Uh, you see the importance of giving back. Uh, so what are some of the initiatives? Because I know that you've done some past initiatives with the first book project, with the Taxi Across America project, with uh, Classrooms. So you, you obviously are thinking very charitable. You're thinking, how can I give back? What are some things that you're, you're investing into right now? So working on a new book called Go Be Kind, okay. where it, it inspires people to go out into the world and simply go be kind. Um, doing things that will make you feel, doing things that will make other people feel, inspiring a win-win um, situation as opposed to I win, you lose, or you lose, I win. That was the same thing, but whatever. Um, <laughs> so th th things like that, that that's, that's the main thing. And then trying to get the show out to as many people as possible. Uh, continuing to do my speeches because uh, I give speeches at uh, schools and businesses about kindness. Uh, and I remind people, you don't have to be perfect. I mean, I am not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Just because I'm the kindness guy, let's say, doesn't mean that I don't do bad things. doesn't mean I'm not... I don't have bad moments. It doesn't mean I don't get angry. It doesn't mean I don't get pissed off at the Uber driver. It doesn't mean any of that <laughs> stuff. But what it does mean is that I do my best to go out and, and share my heart with the world. My best, not, not, my, not perfectly. And that's really my message. Just go out and do your best and come from your heart. And when you have a bad moment, it's okay. You had a bad moment. It yeah. doesn't mean you're a bad human being. It means you had a bad moment. Just get back on the kindness wagon and keep on going. I love that because it's, it's all about uh, making forward motion in that one moment doesn't have to define our, our, who we are and how we interact with the world around us. Exactly. So I want to ask one last question about the Kindness Diaries. You travel with a, a film team. So what's the logistics of that? Uh, dealing with, okay, you're surviving on your own. They're probably uh, not 
in the same boat as you. So how do you navigate some of those issues of being able to live the adventure that you're doing while also bouncing that with the production side of things uh, and and keeping the story pure while uh, having these this other side of it, the other side of the camera? Yeah, I mean, look, we, we, we do our very best to make it as pure as possible. Obviously, when you have a camera, it does take away from that pureness to a certain degree, but soon people forget the camera's there. Mm. And, and I go up to people without the camera and I talk to them without the camera and tell them what I'm doing and then I bring the camera in because you can't just randomly go up to someone with a camera and start talking to them. They're going to be like, what are you doing? Who are you? Why have you got a camera in my face? Yeah. So we try our very best to make it as pure as we can um, and we go from there. That's really, really cool. We're going to take a break here, and then we're going to come back for some rapid-fire questions. These are questions we ask every guest, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So we'll be back with Leon to talk more about his adventures. The heartbeat of JumbleThink is to help dreamers, people with big ideas, to move past the idea and the concept and make it a reality. One of the ways we do that is through a free resource we have on our website. We have two free guides. One is Overcoming the Unknown, and the second guide is How to Know When You Found Your Dream. All you have to do to download your free guide is swing on over to jumblethink.com guide. That's jumblethink.com guide and download your guides. Now let's jump into rapid fire questions with Leon Logothesis. Cool. We are back with Leon for rapid fire questions. Leon, are you ready for uh, rapid fire questions? I'm ready. Okay. So the first question is, what is one tip you'd give someone with a big idea or dream and they don't know where to start? Write it all down. Love that. Share it with yourself first. And then when you find the courage, share it with someone else. You've been around the world. You've depended on the kindness of others. What's one change you would like to see in the world? I would like people to come more from their hearts and to see others as their equals and as the same as they are, because we are no different from each other. You, I know, think about this often, um, and it's part of your approach of life. So what do you want your legacy to be? Oh, wow. I never really think about that. I just want people to be kind to each other. That's really quite simple. And being kind to each other doesn't mean that you have to let people walk all over you. Absolutely not. I do not share that view at all. Do not let people walk all over you. But kindness is not weakness, it's strength. Yeah, I love that. So often it's easy to think uh, kindness means uh, just giving up yourself completely. And it's not that. It's a mindset of how you approach situations and people. Yes. Where do you find inspiration? Oh, good question. Winston Churchill, Gandhi, Martin Luther King. Uh, all the greats of the world that went out and made changes and, and you know, found their way through challenges and kept on going and kept on going and kept on going. Um, weren't perfect, but uh, helped make the world better. Yeah, I think it's so easy uh, in history now, you bring up a lot of people, and it's so easy for us to demonize them by their weaknesses and miss their greatness, where it seems like, you know, we could rip apart Martin Luther King's legacy because of other things that were going on or uh, our Churchill's because of their shortcomings. But it's when we celebrate their strengths and their, their victories, that's so much more powerful. You can demonize any human being that has ever lived. That's so true. What is one book you think every dreamer or entrepreneur should read and why? Mm, that's a very, very good question. One book. Well, one movie is Into the Wild. Okay, yeah. Into the Wild, and there is a the book. They have a book as well, Into the Wild, but I would watch the movie. Okay, very cool. What is one tool that is significant for your success in the businesses and the things that you're doing? Sharing my pain. Mm. When I'm in pain, I share it. Okay. What is one habit that you find helpful as your, in, uh, as your life and as an entrepreneur? Meditation. Any specific uh, tips for meditation for those who are like, ah, I don't know what that, how, did, how do I get started? <laughs> uh, sit in a quiet place for five minutes every morning and cross your legs and just do nothing. Yeah. 
Yeah. How do you start and finish your day? Wow. Ooh, good question. Uh, I start my day. I have like lots of little tasks that I do. So, for example, um, I'll listen to music. I will listen. I will ask myself how I feel. If I feel badly, I will do something to make myself feel better. And then the end of the day, I actually meditate at the end of the day. I should meditate in the morning, but I do it in the, at the end of the day. If you weren't doing what you're doing today, what do you think you'd be doing? Oh, that's, uh, well, if it, was, if it was negative what I would be doing, it would be sitting behind a desk again. Okay. This one was sitting behind a desk, but for me it wasn't my uh, forte. Uh, and if it was positive, I'd be a uh, DJ. <laughs> I would love to see you as a DJ. I'd go see that. So would I. <laughs> <laughs> Our final yeah. rapid fire question is, what is one dream you're still wanting to fulfill in your own life? Uh, to have a family. Yeah. To meet a, a, a woman and uh, have some kids and go on an RV journey around the world with all of them. Oh, that'd be so cool. I'd watch that too. Yes, yes. <laughs> so would I. As we wrap up today's episode, I want to leave you with our final thought of the day. So what would you like to leave our listeners with? Never, never, never give up. Mm. Never let anyone else try and determine who you are and what your life should or should not be. Go out into the world and find people just like you who see you for who you are. So good. Leon, it's been a privilege and a pleasure to have you on. Love your show. I can't wait for season two. I'm, I'm glad that there is a season two, and I'm excited to see that. So thanks for taking time out today. Thank you very much for having me. Once again, I want to thank today's guest, Leon Logothesis, for taking time out, sharing his story, and it's just such a privilege and a lot of fun to have him on today's episode. You can find links to how you can connect up with Leon, find his books, and The Kindness Diaries in the episode notes of today's episode. As we wrap up today's episode, I want to encourage you, kindness, we need more of it in the world. I love that that's the heartbeat of The Kindness Diaries. So think about your life. Think about the things you're doing, the, the communities that you're involved in, and how you can be kinder, how you can approach the world with kindness and joy and love and also i want to encourage you part of kindness is living your life to the fullness and being happy with where you're at so what are the things that you could be doing to move those dreams those ideas the things that you've always wanted to do the things that you believe you were created to do how can you move those forward start thinking about that today and then making some steps Small steps, big steps, but any steps to make those dreams, to make those ideas, make that career choice or that adventure that you've always wanted to take a reality. Thanks for tuning into today's episode. Get out there today, make those dreams a reality, and change the world around you. Sur les côtés, vous êtes une autre personne. Les mères de famille, les enfants peuvent également prendre un moment revitalisant dans quelques mois lorsque vous aurez bien saisi la technique et que vous serez maître de votre corps. Vous pourrez vous décontracter même en travaillant.